Patton speaks the truth about human cloning. Editor's note, to the new and current readers and listeners of my channel, to help you better understand this complex and mind-boggling topic, especially to those that are just waking up. I have been working on compiling a complete series of messages documenting the topic of human cloning, as discussed in all of the entire volumes of the Phoenix Journals which will be forthcoming. The following message below was transmitted, received to and scribed by Dharma, which means, the bringer of truth, or the light of truth an identifying pen name designation given by Hatton, in order to protect her identity and livelihood. From the very ones who wanted her silenced and suicided at all costs. Although it was received and put into print in the early 1990s, to help wake up the sleeping masses from their stupor to what is actually unfolding in a chaotic world gone mad. Many were not ready to hear it, and thus have not awakened, even to this present day many still sleep. It is hoped that the factual information contained here in this time, and not over three decades ago as first given, that people everywhere, may finally begin to understand the true nature of their dire circumstances during these so-called, end times in order to help save themselves by opening their eyes to the sinister plot destined to enslave and control you. So please carefully listen up. As we now proceed with Hatton's message entitled, Regarding Robotoids. Phoenix Journal No. 28, Chapters 8 and 9. Thursday, 4 April, 1991-2.56 p.m. Year 4, Day 231. Dharma, it is well worth the time to duplicate that which was sent to us by R.S. of Southern California for his own identification. I shall always protect our contacts for we will all need to be very much alive if we are to reverse the tide sweeping you away. We also need to be united in understanding and goal intent, therefore, we will simply have to share and re-share information until we all come into comfort and it will be through the sharing of proof confirmation as it flows unto individuals which shall unify the nucleus sent forth for specific purpose and allow the unseeing to gain insight. Do not spend time in great concern for the blindness of children, friends, etc. As God makes his truth the unvarying foundation of our work, so shall ones simply come to see. I am in receipt of a letter this very day, from one who not only withdrew from me but called me many, many quite unsavory names and pulled several away, temporarily, Fortunately, as he went in anger and confusion. Today he comes to say, again in brotherhood, thank you that although learning silence is hard, he is so doing and is working diligently to be worthy of coming again within the fold as student rather than as know it all better than God. We rejoice as the lambs come home. It is greatness in the human who finds errors, recognizes errors and rectifies same, for I care not for name calling, I have at least five feet of very resilient shoulders, with great bounce back capability. Dharma is a bit more fragile and often thinks she must protect me, she is quickly learning that I have plenty of room for her beneath my wings for the whole of us, and she often trusts me enough these days to come on in out of the storm. I have plenty of room aboard for all of you and us too. Now for R.S.'s correspondence. Quote. Dear Commander Hatton, the 20th of March, 1991. First of all let me say that I welcome and accept everything you have written. 
I have received and read all of the Phoenix Expresses, but am two books behind on your Phoenix Journals, but trying to catch up. I find the material alternates between intriguing, engrossing, absorbing, shocking, and discouraging as I read with squeamish fascination. I make extensive notes on each page of both expresses and journals and put my notes on my computer so I can search and seek out information on any particular subject. Hatton, replying, thank you, that is what we mean by proving truth and testing us. The more you test in this manner the better for us for in the sharing comes the confirmation to your brothers as well. R.S. Speaking. Of all the subjects you have covered I believe I can say the most astonishing is in regards to robotoids. I note that when a question comes to you on this subject you indicate that the answer can be found by reviewing the existing expresses and journals which have covered this subject. With that in mind I have gathered all the material I could find and placed it on the enclosed nine pages which I am sending along containing verbatim all the references and explanations. When you, Hatton said quote, This is such a mind-boggling subject and the hardest for all of you to receive and accept that I have almost dreaded the day we would sit to write a dissertation on the subject in full. I believe you can all understand the very grave jeopardy in which this one subject, carelessly handled, can place, even destroy, our entire mission, so, please, I ask indulgence when I say that I simply may not give you step-by-step methods to create a duplicate. I will, however, effort to give you a bit more fundamental how it is done, how you can rapidly create an adult or any stage of growth body development, etc. End quote. Nowhere in these nine pages can I find a precise statement of how the robotoids are created. However, I have noted your explanation below which appeared on page 93 of Shrouds of the Seventh Seal Phoenix Journal No. 24, which seems to be as close as I could come. Quote, these genetic holographic DNA RNA replicas have been in the perfecting for well over four decades. All that is required is a holographic fragment literally, one cell, and a replica can be reproduced. Then all that is required is downloading of the memory data and programming of the manufactured entity. There are technical advances upon your planet, already in use by the elite, which would boggle your senses, robotoids are simplistic in relative comparison. They are comprised totally of physical matter manifested into what you perceive as physical coalition of these physical matter particles coalesced according to the DNA RNA holographic blueprint whereby the re Creation will be a projection of that which is being copied at the time of replication. End quote. I believe I can speak for the common man of the street, since I am a common man of the street, when I say that the underlined and bold-faced sentences in the above two paragraphs leave us with a very blank stare. This may be why you are getting so many questions on this subject as you have indicated. It might have some meaning to the laboratory's scientist but to us men in the street it is just gobbledygook. Please don't misunderstand, we are not looking for a step-by-step how-to-do-it-yourself kind of description, we would merely like a couple of sentences explaining how a full-sized replica can be produced from one cell or fragment. And where does the matter come from which is multiplied to produce a full-sized man or woman? Also what is done with the bodies of robotoids which are being replaced.
How are they able to get this holographic image of those who may have been destroyed before the holographic fragment or cell was obtained? Hatton, you had mentioned in the previous Phoenix journals. Quote, there are technical advances upon your planet, already in use by the elite, which would boggle your senses. End quote. Are you at liberty to reveal what some of these advances are which you indicated by the statement above? If I had to guess I would suspect some might be midgets. Dwarfs and or giants with grotesque features which would be pawned off as space aliens by the elite when they try to pull off the mock attack by space aliens which you have mentioned from time to time. It goes without saying that your expresses and journals are my primary reading. I only wish my 40-year-old son was not such a skeptic and would take an interest. Thanks for being our window on the world and giving us this marvelously comprehensive and fascinating, and sometimes disheartening, view of our life here on Earth. Respectfully, R.S. End of letter. Hatton speaking. My observation is that there will be many readers who still have no idea what we are talking about and will object if I do not give fill in and therefore, though it be tedious, RS has done our real work for us. And that is in pulling out that which we have already covered. Then it becomes easy to fill in some blanks for you. If this is repetition for most of you, I still ask that you study it carefully for it is, as I have said, the very hardest concept to accept and yet, you shall see that it is one of the easiest, if understood, to accomplish. Quote, Human-like genetic replicas, synthetic duplicates. Robotoid humanoids, robotic RNA DNA doubles. As referenced in the Phoenix Expresses and Journals. From Phoenix Express Volume 5, Number 11 and 12, Page 7. The Robotoid Mind. Hatton speaking. I would like to say, prior to the reader's intake that we shall be writing in depth regarding what are known as genetic doubles and robotoids as referred to lately. These are new entities and we shall be speaking of such in this upcoming writing but I would prefer to delay further description until later for we are so stacked up with urgent material. The robotoid mind has no ability to comprehend danger from the larger perspective. It can comprehend its own possible demise, but there is no soul connection to God. Survival is a most elementary emotional connection to God and in times of great stress, that is. All men in a foxhole wholly believe in God, this is through the soul. Since the robotoids do not have this connection, they simply intensify whatever activity they are focused upon, unless concerned for their own bodily survival. Thus we have men in high places who are soulless and beyond the reach of normal reasoning process. We speak truth unto them as to what the consequences are of continuing this insane push and it does not penetrate for the focus is only intensified. So, the maneuvering goes on in attempts to strike what they believe to be our vulnerable point, the crystal and our ground crews. It behoves all ones of this group to stay close within the area and to stay in constant focus of maintenance of your shields. Tis not the time to question the validity of what is going on about you as to reality but to come into understanding that it is real and that you do play a most crucial and critical role in the sequential playing of God's hand in the game being played out. Though we have all manner of scanners and do track and monitor key players, even then we are also somewhat surprised at the audacity of Satan's challenging us directly at this stage. 
but we must all remember that man's plunge into evil has carried him far beyond even that which Satan sanctions. However, neither is he going to put a stop to one of his humans that would carry his plan forward with the creativity that he, Satan, lacks. Neither will he make any effort to protect or salvage these ones. They are way out there on a limb of their own projection, if robotoid, it is a distortion within the original human being that is being followed into manifestation. The discussion is so that you ones may perhaps grasp the degree of danger that not only you as focused group for God face, but humanity as a whole, for few grasp, accept or even have an inkling of what they are facing when it comes to the layers of evil planning as well as the presence of those soulless ones that cannot be reached by God for there is no connection. God does not sanction war or death for it is destructive to the soul to participate in such. However for those that are soulless there is the dilemma of man as to what to do when one such as this becomes focused upon the destruction of God's real children. How indeed do men of God handle such a situation? How does man know when indeed one such being is confronting him face to face? One such test is the challenge. To demand and say to the being. If you are not of holy God, I command that you stop this instant. A soul connected being will hesitate, even if only for a split second. If you identify yourself with holy God, then you had better be prepared to defend self, for a robotoid is programmed to destroy that which is of God. It is part of the process. They have not the connection with God that human has with which to identify each other, so they cannot be sure until you declare yourself, unless you are already known to them. That does not mean that you, if you are walking within the shield of God, are left defenseless in a moment such as this. The presence shall be right at your shoulder and you will be given to know that which you are to do, if you are not in such fear and panic that you cannot instinctively know. Here you could hear words, but the reaction time would not serve you, instead there is a survival instinctual connection that allows for instant perfect action. Thus we encourage you to constantly acknowledge and recognize the presence within you and without you. It is within this presence of spirit that you live, move and have your entire experience. I can assure you if, in a moment of confrontation, your mind takes you back to a rocky or a Clint Eastwood scenario. Instead of connection to your own instinctive God connection that you have cultivated and prepared by holding self in the present moment, your body is either a right off or you will have lots of incarceration time to ponder your error in not being prepared as you are being given direction to do. Now to the next reference from the Phoenix Express Volume 6, Number 4, Page. For, we are ruled by a robotoid army. Hatton speaking. You do have little grey alien replicas on your planet. There are exact likenesses of myself on your planet, having been replicated from basic RNA DNA cellular duplication. Now, however, for that which you may be quite unprepared, you also are governed by and ruled by a robotoid army. Every functioning person of importance to the evolvement into one world, new world, order is a replica. I shall unfold this technology later for I know that you people are not ready for such. You have been subjected to this technology for well over two decades and now you are reaping the final closing of the trap upon humanity. I am not, herein, going to outlay who is who and what is what, watch, and you will be able to discern. 
Is Bill Cooper with his nine-foot alien picture real or false? Would he know if he were not? Likely not. The big boys are getting ready to show you a whole bunch of very earthly spaceships and little and tall aliens. They are going to even bomb some of your cities to bring you into terror of our presence, for they know that with our presence, goes their dominance. Through causing the mass of mankind to fear God's hosts, you bring further confusion and destruction upon selves. You have only Godness coming from the cosmos in the form of cosmic brotherhood, do you actually think the one world rulers will allow that kind of news? To make my point, of all the journals of truth in your oppression and lack of truth, how many of you have a ticket or rental agreement for one of those, deep underground, apartments in Australia? I thought not. Those are very exclusive living facilities, dear ones, planned for the very elite and not all of them. A great number of elite will be greatly surprised as they make fast ascent, right after the bomb goes off. There is no honor with Satan, dear hearts, and you had better begin to recognize his handmen and maidens. Now to the next reference from the Phoenix Express Volume 7, Number 6 and 7. Page 1. Bush is in his 28th cycle of Robotoid. Hatton speaking. Herein you will simply have to believe me when I tell you that there are replacement ones for your top leaders, and hundreds of not so top personages. The 28th George Bush was put into the picture on the 12th of January at Camp David. He was tested and smoothed on the 13th and presented again to you on the 14th. He did not go walk alone this morning, 15th, to reflect and commune with God, he went to be alone so the messages from his puppet masters, right out of Moscow, would not be monitored. I ask that, for the moment, you accept this which I tell you and then we can discuss how this can be true for, of course, many men have died because they brought this information. But information, nonetheless, has been given to you the public as far back as 20 years past, regarding genetic holographic robotoids which bear identical memory patterns but are subsequently programmed. I have written of it in one of the more recent journals but will repeat the information as I have time. Suffice it for now, please accept that which I tell you is not only possible but is, in fact, utilized in myriads of instances, right now. There are several places of top security where these transferences are made and replica holographic information is garnered for necessary multiples. Camp David has been the prime location for it is used as the presidential retreat and often social gatherings, such as birthday celebrations, top-level meetings with diplomats, etc., are carried out. This technology has been perfected in the Soviet Union and thus you have the reason that your government seems so indisposed to do anything other than cozy up to Russia. And now to the next reference from the Phoenix Express Volume 7, Number 8 and 9, Page 15. Genetic Duplicates, Holographic Cellular Duplication, The Programming Mechanism. Hatton speaking. Perhaps later today, the 21st of January 1991, we shall have time to discuss a bit of information regarding genetic duplicates and holographic cellular manifestation of new bodies and the mechanism of programming. The concept is so simple that I am almost embarrassed to discuss it for, as with all things scientific in nature, you will find total simplicity. Sorry about that, we obviously did not find extra time that day. From 
Phoenix Express Volume 7, Number 11, Page 3. Programmed Robotoid Humanoids. Hatton speaking. You cannot, as Americans, understand that which is happening and you stand strong for that which you have been told, afraid to speak out and appear bigoted or against anything regardless of how heinous the actions. Why? Because you are at the point of open warfare in the form of psychopolitical actions called brainwashing and the citizens of a government run by robotoid humanoids programmed to do exactly that which they are doing. Next in. Phoenix Express Volume 8, Number 4 and 5, Page 9. The world's leaders are replicas, Ronald Reagan was slain. Hatton speaking. You say, but there was to be one slain only to rise again and call himself God and then we would know by the sign. There is no way to slay the leaders, dear ones, they are replicas of the originals and there are dozens to take their places and you will never know. You killed Ronald Reagan and yet, you know not that he was dead. All the signs were there, including the running of your important and critical government by astrologers and still, you missed of it. Next from the Phoenix Express Volume 8, Number 6 and 7, Page 12. Robotoids. Hatton speaking. The world is inhabited with reproductions of programmed evil. The world is inhabited by reproductions of programmed evil with density of darkness and no lighted souls to traverse the heavens for they are birthed of the whore of Babylon who rests her feet upon the heads of God's precious creation creations and laughs at the blindness of the lambs. Man realizes not that he walks and serves that which bears no soul essence within the breasts, he follows reproductions of genetic fabrications in blindness. He realizes not that simply through truth and confrontation with that truth shall the evil replicas fall to the wayside. And to continue from Phoenix Express Volume 8, Number 6 and 7, Page 13. Robotoids. The lies become so blatant that it astounds that even the dense of dense can not see, but in many ways the entire masses have been mesmerized by the hypnotic repetition of the robotoids who have been placed in your command to control you. And on page 14. Your top military leaders go forth to the front? They basically go nowhere. How is it that your military hierarchy is still in Washington in the war room? They cannot get very far from Camp David is why. Look at the evil cover-up, even calling the Camp of Evil Replication, David. Phoenix Express Volume 8, Number 6 and 7, Page 14. Bush is now in his 30th replica. Note, this, also appears on page 92 to 93 of Shrouds of the Seventh Seal. Hatton speaking, thank goodness the items match, I probably owe a portion of this to a burly who keeps me on my tippy toes. Even a robotoid who comes within the lighted places of God truth, shall be given so by that grace abounding. An awakened humanity can see the robotic replicas as produced by satanic instruction. For instance, compare the one Cheney and that one, Powell, as they meet with their brother, the 30th replica of Bush on the morrow. All have been wined, dined and exchanged at Camp David whilst you believe them to be studying the military situation in Saudi Arabia. The flaws in the replicas are so obvious that you do not even have to look carefully. These ones are programmed to tell you exactly that which will pull you into the beast's claws as dead ahead as a machine can move. Then we have the following from the Phoenix Express Volume 8, Number 8 and 9, Page 2. 
Robotoids, Puppet Masters. Hatton speaking. Robotoids and genetic doubles, I repeat, have been around and steadily being perfected for four decades of public use right before your eyes. Editor's note, keep in mind to all of my listeners and readers, it's now been over seven decades since this disclosure was first given. Now let us continue back to Hatton. They are a product of the Soviet Zionists and have been your puppet masters for a long, long time, a new twist of sick humor perhaps, the puppet pulling the human's strings. Let us take a short break. Editor's note. Rather than make a separate continuation video on my YouTube channel, I have included the remaining portions of the message in order to maintain the continuity of sequence and flow of information given to the world by Commander Hatton. So therefore, let us please continue. From Phoenix Journal Number 24. Creation, The Sacred Universe. Chapter 9. Recording number 4 Hatton. Thursday, the 4th of April, 1991. 5.06 p.m. Year 4, day 231. Page 192. Regarding Robotoids, continued. When I get opportunity to remind you about Russian Robotoids, you will perhaps stop calling us kooks and your enemies, we outlined, in the 1970s, the entire picture and availability of Russian Robotoids and duplicates. Aha, you caught me. Yes, we had some receivers as far back as that and one of the best, which I shall still leave unnamed a bit longer, was killed for his efforts. If your leaders are of Russian control, dear hearts, you will come under the control of Russia, no more and no less, and, you already have placed in your councils, controlled substitutes. These ones are further programmed by pulsed beams and will function according to the overall global plan 2000. I, Hatton, ask that someone in the group send RS copies of the tapes of our meeting when WH was with us for I believe it was at that session I discussed Yeltsin Gorbachev. One reason that there is so much confusion in the Soviet Union this day is because Gorbachev is a many times replaced robotoid and Yeltsin is not. This infuriates the Khazar elite and they will destroy the world along with Russia if that is what is required to gain control. I shall not go into this further for it is like a death contract on my people. I would hope that you ones can figure some manner in which we can make available some of our sessions such as the ones when visitors are in our midst. The load is simply too great for me to insist so please bear with us for our staff is at the breaking point and I am vastly increasing output, as you can see. I must leave it to the publisher to decide what to do about the problem of such quantities of material. Dharma and I plan to continue as fast as we can pour it out upon you. Next up from the Blood and Ashes, Journal Number 18, page 83, regarding genetic replicas of humans. In the late part of the 1970s the existence of man-made genetic replicas of human beings was made public. The revealers were locked away instantly in the key trust. It was disbelieved although motion pictures were made as sci-fi and the subject buried under threat of penalty of death to disclosers. They, however, did, and do exist and were pressed into service right before your eyes. You didn't even blink at them, no sir, you just gobbled up the lie, chewed it and swallowed it in total. When first revealed to you they were referred to as synthetics and in honor of the daring truth bringers we shall continue to label them as such. 
I request that herein you not ask me for details of the replicas for they are not the point of my story and they will be covered at a more appropriate writing, just know that they do exist and currently they are used continually to cover the shadow parallel governments of your nations. Suffice it here to simply state that they do exist and were utilized in the April launch. One reason the preparation time of early astronauts was so lengthy for public consumption was to facilitate perfecting duplication of all segments, including the astronauts. Actually, the duplicates need not be perfect for plans are well laid in case of discovery and alteration can be instantly orchestrated if necessary. People cannot describe a suspect if at the scene of a murder, on oath, you certainly are not paying attention to anything that would cause you to suspect illusion if it remotely resembles the real thing. Little grey aliens in underground secret bases? Oh, my friends, you have no conceivable idea what wondrous secrets are in your underground secret military bases. Tuesday morning, the 14th of April, genetic replicas called synthetics of the then late astronauts, Young and Crippin, were readied at White Sands. They were programmed to take a computerized ride on the training shuttle Enterprise. The Young and Crippin entities boarded the Enterprise which was mounted on top of the launched 747. After rocket fuel was loaded for the shuttle, the 747 took off and headed west, avoiding commercial air traffic. The launched 747 headed out over the Pacific until it was several hundred miles west of Los Angeles. Then it turned back east toward the California coast. On television, tell, a, vision, you were told that the non-existent Columbia was re-entering from orbit. Burnt offerings and blood-stained sands, journal number 23, page 212, regarding, humanoid robotoids RNA, DNA doubles, genetic. Hatton goes on to say. George Green, asks me, Hatton, to comment a bit more on this subject for his group meeting in Florida. I have already written sufficiently, most recently, regarding how the doubles are created from holographic projection and DNA cellular reproduction. Please do not ask Dharma to spend time in repetition. With some 14 of you reading this material daily, surely at least one of you can locate the writing bearing this information, if not, sick sick. I will, however, tell you when the Bolshevik use of these doubles became mandatory and proliferation blossomed. Now, in addition, you always desire speaking of the little grey aliens, okay, get ready. For this is where from came the technology for reproduction of the robotoids. It is not like the projections the UFO crowd pronounce nor are the secret Majestic 12 uncovering truthful, the documents are total fabrication. When I tell you that the problem of little grey aliens on your place is not coming this day from the cosmos, believe it. It is the evil on your own place meant, now locked into your earth density, which is your problem. Your immediate perpetrators and expressionists are the Zionists in disbursement throughout the governments and financial communities, along with, of course, the scientific. Any more recently transported little grey aliens which are seen regularly and reported by ones who see them and cannot be denied, are mostly reproductions. You are watching the very duplicates made functional by Satan himself come to, what appears, life. It is not the same kind of life given through creator in soul manifested, physical matter. Therefore. 
Know that he can reproduce replicas ad nauseum from genetic blueprints and programming but he still only has robotoids and robotoids continually give him a great deal of trouble for they are easily identified once people realize there is such a thing. It is the ignorance of the fact of it that keeps the secret secure. You witness, say, Mr. Bush acting in a such and such manner and looking particularly young, then over the weekend he is changed and appears either more youthful or older, but definitely different. You simply mark it up to a bad night's sleep or too much to think about or responsibility or any number of excuses for the change. Even your magazines and newspapers note the changes and simply comment on the incredible duplicity of the man. No, you are now encountering your 29th replica of George Bush. And with him must come a new Barbara Bush lest the show be spoiled. These duplicates become weak in strain and, under stress, are incapacitated quite rapidly as would be a growing organism placed in a stressed environment. Henry Kissinger is another one to watch closely, he is changed out frequently, also, for he bears the responsibility of orchestrating the plan for New World Order. So, if Kissinger is a biggie and is also Robotoid, who is the puppet master? You guessed it. The Prince of Deceivers, himself. You were told that, in the ending, Satan would be given total rule over the planet and you now have a very real entity deceiving you as a mass populace of the planet. Well, why don't you do something about it, you who claim to be of the light? We are, we are bringing you truth just as fast as you will accept it, for when you know and accept truth, you will also be given to know how to counter that which is imitations of life. You who are creations of God's source are not imitations of life but experiencing fragments of the Creator's self. Satan's army is now landlocked, unfortunately, it is on the same land upon which God's creations are also experiencing. So be it for it is the schoolroom of soul progression. You are simply living out the prophecies as you perceive them to be. You see, even the prophecies of one Nostradamus are coming into focus, the Mongol in the blue turban, let us say, this represents the Khazar element of the Antichrist with the flag colors of blue represented by the turban, which was the color, or flag, of identification in the ages past. The Soviet Union appeared to have been killed and is now to rise again more deadly than ever. Even the Pope of Rome is a duplicate playing the role of deceiver. Ah, but when did it become necessary to begin to bring doubles into public perfection? With the death of David Rockefeller. Shrouds of the Seventh Seal The Antichrist Whore of Babylon. Journal Number 24. Page 93, regarding, doubles, robotoids and replicas. Beloved ones, these men you perceive to be leading you are replicas and incapable of either compassion or change of programming, they have one goal in sight and are programmed to move unfaltering to that goal even if frequent replacement is required, the global control of your planet, in place and operable, by the turn of the millennium. These robotoids have no manner of control by which to function differently and unless you stop their march to doom, so shall it come to be. How is it that you find this difficult to accept? These genetic holographic DNA RNA replicas have been in the perfecting for well over four decades, now, for over seven decades. All that is required is a holographic fragment literally, one cell, and a replica can be reproduced. 
Then all that is required is downloading of the memory data and programming of the manufactured entity. I have spoken of this procedure prior to this and will not take precious time to repeat and repeat for those who simply do not wish to go back and effort at gaining the information. You see, I, Hatton, care not in the least whether or not you believe me nor if you understand the mechanism by which it works. You are willing victims of the lie and you will awaken or sleep on, it is up to you. Our commission is to outlay the truth unto you, yours is to confirm and acknowledge, or not, as you wish. There are technical advances upon your planet, already in use by the elite, which would boggle your senses, robotoids are simplistic in relative comparison, and the rest of the document is repetition. End of quoting. Thank you. Friend, you have done a lot of work and, also, have saved me work in reconstruction. One problem is that, somehow, some of my prior information is still missing and therefore, I can only assume it to be in one or two of your missing journals. It is not sufficient to stop me from responding for I have not yet told you how you grow so fast, at any rate. Know that you will read my discussion, or it got omitted which I think not probable, that there are already working duplicates of, for instance, cattle. There are also the projects in research to clone body parts for identical transplantation of heart, limbs, etc., without rejection of the attachment for it will bear identical genetic structure and the body will not recognize the difference. Now to a bit of specific technology to consider. There are two kinds of cells in the body, the germ, the sperm cells and the egg cells, which produce the next generation and the soma, the cells of the blood, brain, muscles, and everything else. Each somatic cell has two sets of chromosomes in its nucleus. When it divides into two cells, all the chromosomes double, and each daughter cell receives a complete double set. But when the eggs and sperm are formed, by a process called meiosis, the two sets of chromosomes are broken up, and only one set goes to each of the daughter cells. Each egg cell and each sperm cell carry a random mix of half of an individual's traits, the only time they have a complete set of chromosomes is when their nuclei come together during fertilization. At the moment of fertilization, life begins anew with an individual that is identical to neither its mother nor its father but rather is a 50-50 combination of both. Starting out as a single cell, the embryo grows rapidly, not in size but in number of cells, first two cells then. The growth begins when the nuclei come together during fertilization. The point then, of replication is to introduce two identical nuclei from the same entity. Upon integration they will multiply identically as above stated for it represents fertilization, the cell recognizes no difference. And thus begins replication of an identical clone. As the cells multiply the embryo is a mulberry-like cluster of cells called a morula, scarcely bigger than the fertilized egg. As division continues, the morula turns into a hollow mass called a blastula, blastocyst in mammals, which is first hundreds, then thousands of cells strong. In the event of artificial cloning it is much like a test tube embryo except that it is completed in a medium which allows the nutrients of life to be utilized. While this is happening, there is a holographic image available for alteration as necessary for duplication of the finished entity. In the early division, all the cells of the embryo are indistinguishable from one another. 
but later some of the cells begin to specialize, and the process of differentiation begins. As development proceeds and the embryo takes on shape and form, more and more cells become committed to a particular pathway, changing in form and function. The blood cells make hemoglobin, the muscle cells make a muscle protein, and so on. The facts are, and research now shows, every single cell in a body contains all the necessary things to reproduce a replica. It must be noted that adult differentiated cells and egg cells are on two very different timetables for division. The egg is on the fast track, ready to spring into action about an hour after fertilization if left absolutely alone, while the far slower differentiated cell is programmed to divide every two days or longer. So when the nucleus of an adult cell is placed in a recipient egg, it is forced to divide before it is ready. Chromosomes get left behind or are torn apart. The result is that some of the clones have chromosomal abnormalities and may be genetic monsters. Now it gets more technical and tedious. Several things must take place to reproduce a well-rounded duplicate. As the cells are growing there must be introduced something which will accelerate growth and reproduction. You have in each body a functioning gland called the pituitary, I think is your label, which regulates growth. If something happens, say a tumor, in an adult wherein the pituitary gland becomes hyperfunctional, a disease, which I believe you call something like acromegaly which is chronic hyperpituitarism marked by progressive enlargement of hands, feet, and face, occurs and within very short periods of time the body will simply outgrow itself, become huge and because the bone structure cannot house it the monstrously rapid growth can simply kill itself from overgrowth. So, if the pituitrin from the gland is introduced in increased amounts during the early formation and duplication of cells, the growth rate is incredibly rapid. As the body reaches proper proportion and the cells mature into proper function in the proper placement, the hormone is decreased and additional amounts stopped completely. Understand that this is oversimplification of a rather complex mechanism, however, once the duplication process has been accomplished once or twice, the amount of additives is pretty well decided and the duplication becomes indeed rote. I believe you can understand that as these reproductions are created they become less stable and much less sturdy although they will replicate even to the age category depending on giving additional hormones or withholding same. Then what is not perfected by natural growth and aging can be surgically altered. So, what have you? You have a body functioning as a machine and a pretty empty mind of a womb infant. It becomes very easy to download information from one brain to another, especially if there is no preconceived ideas or thoughts in the recipient brain. It becomes simple to place the outgoing replica or person into a state of imaging and the images in response to questions and input guidelines are extremely rapidly read off just like a rapid fire computer system. Don't be fooled by that which you are not told much about, but there are cameras which can now photograph thoughts, downloading a mind is nothing and can be completed in only a few brief hours. During this same period of time programming for current and future functioning is integrated. Flaws in personality will most often be continually exaggerated and this is that which becomes the problem, that of keeping the entity under control. What happens to the original? 
It goes where all first creations go, the soul departs and goes to its proper placement for progressive experience. The clones, when no longer useful, are simply dumped. If the expression within the essence is recovered and given again the gift of soul entrance through grace, and there is no other way, beloved ones, then the clone becomes a functioning whole and separate entity but will bear the mental rememberings of the original and will pretty much continue the original's experiences. Hence comes the term of terms, walk-in. Now I remind you ones who like to consider yourselves walk-ins for God, forget the concept. Clonus are of evil beginnings by any measure of the term. Replacement of energy form into an existing body is indeed of evil. God needs no such fabrications. If God needs a body, he creates one, remember, Satan as you call him, cannot create, he must utilize that which is already created, havoc is all that evil one can create. So you see, it is not even longer speculative among the scientific community. By combining the techniques of nuclear transfer with those of in vitro fertilization, the technology for cloning human embryos is now online. Using the same basic technique of serial transfer, scientists can duplicate the same embryo over and over again thereby cloning not just embryos but human adults. Scientists have long been able to trick adult body cells, normally differentiated to perform specific tasks, into going backward in time to an early embryonic stage when all the genes were fully turned on and all things were possible. The researchers reached the power to turn back the clock, so to speak, making an adult cell young or duplicating a being at any age level through manipulation. You must understand that in the beginning of this idea it was set forth as wondrous to be able to have a second set of organs, etc., if ever needed for individuals. Well, of course one secret thing led to another until they were taking a cell from an individual, transferring it into an enucleated egg, growing the embryo in culture for a few days, and then putting it into a surrogate uterus. After about six weeks into the embryonic development, the collection of primitive cells called the telencephalon, the forerunner to the higher brain, would be removed and frozen. In this way the body clone would never develop a brain capable of anything more than secreting hormones and commanding the most basic vegetal bodily functions. It would never perceive pain or love. Without any portion of the higher brain, the body clone would be less human than the fish that graces your dinner table. Once the body clone would be grown to the appropriate size by intravenous feeding and hormone injections, it could serve as the equivalent of a brain-dead organ donor, only in this case there would be no rejection of a transplant. Since the clone would have exactly the same genetic makeup as the person from whom it was derived, all its parts, from the facial features to vital organs, could be replaced as though they were the person's own, which they would be. If now, the desirability is of having a functioning higher brain, then the additional steps would need to be taken to re-establish the telencephalon. The problem that many scientists face in cloning is that in the reproducing much of the personality which makes a human sexual is lost and also it gets rid of all the very characteristics that are enjoyed about a human. As a matter of fact, as dangerous as the actual cloning of beings is what is happening already on a massive scale, the brain control which causes everyone to act in various controlled manners. 
How is it that a hundred million Americans watch the Super Bowl, or millions of people buy little plastic discs with scratches on them? Basically this is worse for the perfectly good and functional gifted mind is wasted. The potential for abuse is incredible and so it has become a fact. The fact that contents of a brain can be transferred only requires knowledge of the psychochemical way in which memory is stored, and you have known how memory is stored in a computer. With the proper psychochemical balance it is merely a matter of transfers from one computer disk onto another. With cloned brains and memory transfer, the individual is raised to the nth power, but without the capacity of moral conscience as given unto man in the form of soul. You see, the purpose is not to just serially immortalize but to produce parallel infinity. Please allow this to be sufficient for this sitting as I have a very weary scribe who is wishing I would just clone her a little bit more time and a few more fingers. I thank you for your inquiry and I hope I have been complete enough to satisfy without overburden. I am sorry to leave out any of your questions but I simply may not jeopardize my beloved counterparts by speaking of the other advanced technical achievements at this time. Too much information makes you targets and I refuse to allow that as my scribe, for instance, is marked like a neon sign already and therefore I give her nothing more than any of you have in access for if there is nothing to gain from her. She is left alone and our adversaries know that she is given nothing for they glean exactly that which I give her, right as she writes it on this apparatus. Our sole mission is to awaken mankind, not invent new or reinvent old technologies and man's problem, already, is that his technology is far advanced of his ability to socially survive. Know that as things are acceptable, proper ones will be given into knowing the information in proper sequence. God does pretty well at planning, and remember, he wins. That, brothers, means we win. Close this out, Dharma. I want to share the other information and confirmation received from AB regarding Egypt, etc., but we are too fatigued for this day. Thank you, Keela student, for relentless service and know, dear one, that when we pull this off, then you can go clean your cupboards. In great love beyond your knowing, I humbly bend in appreciation to you precious ones who struggle along with us in this journey acting as alarm clocks, the rewards shall be grand indeed for the promises of God are always met although you rarely have perceived them properly. Even so, they are always more wondrous than you can imagine. In brotherhood and friendship I take leave this evening. Hatton to clear, please. Please note to all readers and listeners. Still can't believe what you are hearing? See the description section of this video for more videos discussing human cloning and for the above journal link. In addition, you will find the initial starting foundational Phoenix journals recommended to read by Commander Hatton, to all those who seek the path of truth. For the new readers and listeners, you may be asking, what exactly are the Phoenix Journals? The Phoenix Journals help unravel and clarify the many lies, tamperings and misconceptions foisted upon the masses, by those who seek to control the thoughts, perceptions and actions of others, that have been passed down from generation to generation. Especially those of the Christed life teachings of Isu Emmanuel Jesus Sananda. The Phoenix journals are the word of truth given to mankind from the higher realms of light, during this most critical time of planetary evolution upon Earth. The Phoenix Journals are intended as a real-time commentary on current events, 
how current events relate to past events and the relationships of both to the physical and spiritual destinies of mankind in truth. They are the record of the birthing and early days of the phoenix, which is of course the symbol of transformation. The phoenix is also known as the thunderbird and variations thereof in the oral traditions of indigenous people throughout the world. The age of Egypt drew to a close and a transition into a literal new unprecedented age is in progress. For current and future generations, the Phoenix journals provide invaluable insights into truth of what happened and why. All of history, as we now know it, has been revised, rewritten, twisted and tweaked by selfishly motivated men to achieve and maintain control over other men. When one can understand that everything is comprised of energy and that even physical matter is coalesced energy, and that all energy emanates from God's thought. One can accept the idea that the successful focusing of millions of minds on one expected happening will cause it to happen. If the many prophecies made over thousands of years are accepted, these are the end times, specifically the year 2000, the second millennium, etc. That would put us in the sorting period and only a few short years from the finish line. God has said that in the end times would come the word, to the four corners of the world, so that each could decide his her own course toward, or away from, divinity based upon truth. So, God sends his host's messengers to present that truth. This is the way in which he chooses to present it, through the Phoenix journals. Thus, these journals are truth which cannot be copyrighted, they are compilations of information already available on earth, researched and compiled by others, some, no doubt, for this purpose, which should not be copyrighted. The first 60 or so journals were published by America West Publishing which elected to indicate that a copyright had been applied for on the theory that the ISBN number, so necessary for booksellers, was dependent upon the copyright. Commander Hatton, the primary author and compiler, insisted that no copyrights be applied for and, to our knowledge, none were. Therefore, these journals are not copyrighted except Sipapu Odyssey which is fiction. The Phoenix Journals, known as the Holy Books of the Lighted Realms are writings of truth for the people of our world, and are for our guidance through these end times on our planet. Received during the 1990s from Creator God via radio transmission from the Phoenix Starship, under the command of Giliagus Ceres Hatton, commander of the Pleiadian Star Fleet. Quoting from Commander Hatton. These journals are the words of truth which God promised he would send forth at the end times to give man one last chance to choose truth over the lie. The Phoenix journals are directed and given forth from the higher brotherhood sent forth by the hosts for the preparation of this time of cycles when this civilization will make transition into higher understanding or return to the ages of darkness. End quote. If the truth is to reach the four corners of the world, it must be freely passed on. It is hoped that each reader will feel free to do that, keeping it in context, of course. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel, and as always, have a wonderful day. In love and light. Thank you.